Welcome to the ultimate guide for making Shran's drums today. I'm going to be showing you how to make every single element you need to make powerful hard hitting drums for your next Shran's track. To go with this video, I just dropped my ultimate Shran's drum template. The link's right at the top of the description on my website. Definitely go grab that because it's going to give you the ultimate template to get started and get going on these drums immediately and have something really high quality that you can build your own tracks with. Thanks for the support guys. Really helps keep me going. If you guys enjoy these videos, links at the top of the description and let's dive in. All right. Alright, so when it comes to making Shran drums, you're always going to want to start with your kick and bass. So what's happening here is we've got a kick, just a nice hard hitting fat techno kick. You notice though I did cut off a little bit of the tail, right? You know because you're going to have so much rumble down here. You don't need this to be so long, right? You just want a nice fat punch, but still some body to it, right? So we've got that. We are cutting the sub out of that at 52 hertz, and then we're just converting the bass to mono. Really simple. I don't like to overprocess the kick punch, but then we've got the rumble. Now, the secret with the Shran's rumbles is if we turn off all the processing, you can hear it's just a basic rumble, right? We're creating this one using the same kick you just saw, like 16th note arpeggiator, amp, band pass. But then we've got these like drum percussion loops. And they're processed too, like I take out a lot of highs. So then when you put those all together, you get like this. And then you're going to distort them. So I like to use amp for this. High pass at about like 50 hertz or maybe a little below her. Plus low pass, cut out some of the highs. Maybe a little more distortion if you want. And then side chain so it fits underneath the kick. And then on the whole group, if you do that properly, all you're going to have to do is just a little bit more sub cut at the end. Right? So things are just nice and airy and grooving properly. And then just converting it to mono. And that's really it, right? It really comes down to that rumble and the layering of the sounds into the distortion. Plus the fact that the distortion, since you're putting a ton of low end into it, is going to crunch that mid range so hard. So once you have that, then I always move up to a nice fat hi-hat. So this is one I actually made with the Ableton synth Poly. You all are able to use this, right? But basically what I did here is it's noise with a bit of ring mod. Which you can hear kind of gives it a bit of like a pitch. Plus some high passing and low passing here. But then you can see I have a really fast LFO on the actual ring mod frequency so you see that's what gives it like that more percussive sort of texture because if you slow that down see it's not really got that like dissonance that you get from the really fast lfo on the ring mod frequency plus like a short envelope but yeah you can actually make really fat hi-hats just with a synthesizer you really don't need the samples even for that from there, I usually like to add a little bit of kind of like background percussion that's not so like in your face constantly. So that's what these are. So I'll turn off the group processing for a sec. So it's some synth percussion I made with operator with resonators. They're both kind of working on similar principles, right? We got like this. You know, just a bit of noise with like a high pass filter. And then I've got resonators. And you can see if you distort it, you get like something really fat. And then down here, it's pretty much like a very similar patch, just kind of playing with it a little bit differently. So yeah, the noise, echo into the resonator. And then again, overdrive it, 
And there you go. So you can get a lot of synth percussion just using resonator with noise, actually. And then on the group, we got a bit of side chain, high pass, and then a little bit of low pass. And there we go. So now you have this. Right, and now we need some ch -ch 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 percussion. So that's where these loops come in. And the key is the layering, right? Yes, I'm using loops here. Yes, I mean, you kind of have to with this genre to get that, like, live feel. But the key is not just using the loops. It's how you use them and how they all fit together. Because if you listen to this, again, if you solo any one of these... It's all very different stuff, so it kind of creates one loop. You know, and you don't even need much processing, it's just the, the quality of the sound is already kind of what you want it to be. This one, I got a bit of distortion, right? I like side-chained it and then distorted it. But yeah, it's very simple. Just maybe a bit of high pass on those, and then you put those together with the rest of the drums. And there you go, you got a nice, powerful Schranz drum section. So that's gonna be it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe and let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said at the beginning of the video, you can get the ultimate Schranz drum template. Links at the top of the description. Then we don't miss out. Super, super high quality template that I promise will help you make the best Schranz track of your life today. Thanks for the support, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.